So, the Nano is two months old and I think it's about time for an update. Officially two months in and I'm actually really looking, really liking um, how this tank is, is turning out. Other than this little area over here, uh, I do plan on moving these mushrooms and selling these mushrooms on. Uh, but other than that little area, I'm actually really happy with how this tank is turning out. If anyone's after a Superman Discosoma mushroom uh, and you're in the UK, drop me a message because I'm selling them off pretty cheap. But yeah, like I say, um, it's, looking, it's looking pretty good. I'm liking the, uh, the open space we've got over on this side of the tank. Um, I'll go through, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do first, I'll, I'll shut the blinds, I'll put the filter on and we'll, uh, we'll look at this tank under some blues because I don't really share any pictures of, uh, of blue shots anymore. So we'll see what it looks like uh, now. Okay, so here she is. This is the little nano tank, two months old, and um, actually doing really, really well. I'm, I, w I don't know what to say, I'm surprised how well it's doing, but I'm, um, I'm surprised I didn't lose any, uh, any stock. I've lost nothing so far. I mean, these Yodas look like they're possibly gonna melt, but they're looking like they're clinging on um, for their dear life. Um, They've looked like that for about two weeks to be fair, so I'm thinking they're either going to melt or they're just going to bounce back completely. Uh, these Granny Smiths, some of them are melting and some of them are doing all right. Uh, but for the most part, everything is looking very, very happy. I'll turn the pumps off and we'll see if we can do a little top-down view and we'll go through exactly what corals we've got in this tank. All right, so the pumps are off. I'm not sure how well you can see it from the top down. It's just going in and out of focus. I'm not sure why it doesn't want to focus. Um, but you can see I've got a little bit of space left. I've got some space over here on the top of this rock and I've got a bit of space uh, down here. But uh, it's filling out nicely, to be fair. I'm really liking how this tank is, uh, is turning out. Um, the Zoas I got from uh, Emma Fallow Zoas, they're all pretty much at the top here. Sorry, it keeps focusing on my finger. Um, they're all looking really good. Some of the Zoas that I took from uh, my holding tank aren't looking the best, uh, but some of them are really starting to look great. I mean, these little mega rainbows here, they're looking fantastic. Um, Acans are doing great. Um, so yeah, someone asked um, if I can go through and just say exactly what corals we've got in this tank. So it's pretty much, as you can tell, it's Zoa dominated. Uh, we've got a rock flower and enemy. We've got a couple of uh, Acan frags, one here, one here. Um, we've got a Symphilia Wilsoni. I did move that. Originally, I had that where the Echinata is, uh, but the Echinata started going. Um, it started to lose its color, I think. You can see where it's green here, and this was all green. Yeah, so I switched it out because um, it, started to, it started to lose its color, and um, it likes lower sort of light, and when it's in higher light, it loses its green. Uh, so I switched it out for these Symphilia, but I'm also thinking about switching this Symphilia out for something maybe a bit more green, maybe a green Acan frag. It's, just, uh, it's still looking pretty orange at the front, orange and uh, red, and I wouldn't mind mixing some green in there. We've got a torch that I took from the 250. You can't really see the colours on the torch. Let me try. Uh, it's actually a gold and green torch, but because it was right in the middle of the colony, right at the bottom and getting absolutely no light, uh, that's why the head's so small and also it's got no colour. Uh, we've got a chalice, um, and I think that's about it. Mushrooms, we've got a few mushrooms dotted about. Uh, but overall, this tank is, is honestly just doing really, really well. Uh, other than the Yodas up here, um, there's been no losses. I thought I had, I thought my, where has he gone? There's a Halloween hermit crab around here somewhere, and he shed, and he's, there he is. He's never ever shed before. I've owned him probably, well, I've never seen him shed before. And I found his body or shell uh, on, in the middle of the, the Zoa garden somewhere. I thought, oh God, he's died. So I grabbed his shell and I put the shell down here and I thought, well, I'm not gonna chuck it away uh, just in case he has just shed. And um, lo and behold, the next morning I, I woke up and the shell was gone. Uh, it moved over into the, into the Zoa garden somewhere and he was uh, just pottering around. Um, cleaning up in between the zoas. Um, hermit crabs are a great addition, but the only problem is if you've got a zoa garden, I mean, you can see half of these zoas are closed because he just works his way around. Um, and as he nudges the zoas, they close up. Um, so it's a bit of a pain, but he does a great job of, uh, of cleaning up. So I can't really complain. There's also another crab just down there, but you can't really see me. He actually hides behind a rock flower anemone. 
when uh, when he goes to sleep at night. Uh, chalice, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but there is a chalice in there. And uh, and that is the, the coral stock we've got so far. I'm going to put the pumps back on now. All right, so the pumps are back on. With regards to flow, I have literally just got the, the standard return pump that comes with this. Uh, I've got two RFGs, random flow generators, and I've got a TMC uh, wave maker. I'm actually going to open the blinds again and we'll, uh, we'll go through the equipment that I'm running on this tank as well. All right, so we're back in white mode. It looks a lot better under, uh, under blues, as you can tell, but uh, I want to go through some of the equipment and exactly how I've got it set up. So I'm not yet dosing on this tank, but I do have a doser ready to start dosing. This little cupboard here, let me zoom out a little bit. This is where I keep my uh, ATO container. I keep my dosing bottles, which aren't full yet. Doser and also the controls. So what have we got in here? We've got the Mighty Jet return pump. We've got the TMC uh, wave maker. I've got the temperature controller. I keep it at 25.5, but it's a little bit warm in here. The heat is not on, but it is getting a bit warm. So it's coming into summer at the minute and I'm going to need to think about cooling this tank. Um, last year when it was summer I had a different setup. I had the same tank but a whole different tank, a whole different setup and I had fans on here blowing air across this way. I'm probably going to do the same because I can open this window here. Uh, where is it? There we go. So I can open the window and I can get fresh air coming in and blowing straight across uh, the top of this tank. It doesn't look the best um, but it does a cracking job of keeping it cool um, and the whole, whole of last summer uh, the tank never overheated. Uh, so that's the plan for cooling of the tank um, for this year. Uh, the 250 I've got the same, I'll quickly go over to the 250. As you can see I've got um, GHL fans on this one, I've got one either side. And honestly they do a really good job, I mean it doesn't get too hot over here. Um, I mean the, the most we'll ever see is like 30... 32, 33 degrees Celsius, and that's like on an absolute peak. Uh, in the summer, it generally sticks around 25, 26. Um, so fans, they're absolutely perfect for this little tank. Uh, with regards to dosing, I'll, uh, I'll go and grab what I'm going to be dosing on this tank. All right, so for dosing, we're going to be using Triton other methods. Um, Triton other methods is the Triton method without having to have a refugium and given size of the tank and it's an all in one I obviously can't have a refugium. I've used the Triton method, Triton other methods before and it was great. Um, the only thing is it's quite concentrated so I'm going to mix it up and then dilute it by 50% so 50% Triton and then 50% RO water because I was dosing up I think 0.2 mil a day when I was um, dosing on this tank before and um, it might be lower now because I had a, few, a fair few torches in the tank before and now this is just mainly Zoas and uh, a few LPS. So we'll see how we get on with that. But I'm going to start dosing on the tank maybe in the next week, two weeks. Um, but in the meantime, I'll be testing the alkalinity daily and uh, seeing what the consumption is. Now we'll finally move on to the skimmer and nutrients. The skimmer is the Nuvo skim. I've actually just had to empty this skimmer. Um, but I tell you what, for a small little skimmer, I underestimated it. I thought it was going to be pretty rubbish, and it actually pulls out a fair amount of skim. So much so that the um, the tank is running really quite low nutrients. Um, phosphates. I only I feed the fish twice a day. Uh, I don't even feed, overfeed them. I um, I spot feed them what they need when they're finished. I'll feed them a bit more, and then when they stop eating, I um, I stop feeding. Um, so phosphates are running at 0.01 and nitrates are running at two to five parts per million. I mean, I'm getting readable results, which is great, so I'm not gonna change anything up. Uh, whilst everything's looking happy in the tank, uh, I don't see the point in changing it. Um, I like to run lower nutrients than higher nutrients, because obviously, when you're running higher nutrients, you're running into to algae issues, and there is absolutely no pest algae in this tank whatsoever. I mean, the rocks are green, but the rocks are green because they are just still maturing. I mean, the tank's only two months old, um, so we're, we're still waiting for the, the coralline algae to take over. But, um, but there's literally no algae. I clean, clean the glass once every two, three days. Other than that, um, it pretty much runs itself. 
the conch, someone mentioned in my last video when I did the, um, the water change video on this tank, do I do anything with the sand bed? I literally do nothing. The conch is, I think, last time I saw him, he was here, look, you could just see his eye poking out there. He usually wakes up at about, he's quite a lazy bugger to be fair, usually wakes up at about four or five o'clock. He spends the rest of the day and, uh, and half the night just uh, turning the sand bed over. Um, so, yeah, I, I originally planned on uh, moving him to the 250, but to be honest, he's doing such a cracking job of keeping this tank clean um, that I'm just going to buy another one, another one for the 250 because he's doing a really good job. Um, so, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. I mean, if you've got any questions regarding this tank, uh, drop them down in the comments if I've not covered anything. I did put a post up yesterday on the community uh, asking if anyone wanted to hear anything about this tank. And I think I've pretty much gone through what everyone asked. Um, so yeah, that'll pretty much wrap it up for this week's video. If you've enjoyed, if you've enjoyed the content, please do like and subscribe and uh, have a cracking week.